What's up everybody? Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today we're going to talk about what are the components that make up a moon glow boa constrictor. So for some reason I've been getting a lot of requests on Facebook and Instagram of how to make a moon glow boa. People have been sending me pictures of their snakes saying, hey I have this male and this female, will this get me to a moon glow boa? And uh, let's just dive right into what a moon glow boa is and what are the different combinations that you can make. I have all kinds of snakes and examples next to me, so stick with me throughout the video and I'm going to keep showing you some different snakes. I have some sun glows, albinos, snows, hypos, and anatheristic. And those are all the different things that are either in a moon glow boa or combinations that you can get from different pairings of moon glow boas that you have. So what a moon glow boa is. This snake right here is an albino hypo anatheristic. So it's a three gene snake with two recessive, which is the anatheristic and albino, and one incomplete dominant trait. The incomplete dominant being the hypo. So to get this snake, you need to have, all the snakes need to have, or either of the snakes need to have both albino and anery in them. And then one of them needs to have a hypo. So I have a combination next to me. These snakes were actually breeding. You guys know I love you, so I actually had to interrupt them from breeding so I can show you in the video, because I actually only have one anatheristic snake in my collection. Um, I have a bunch of hypos and stuff like that, and I, actually, I don't have any ghosts, but we're going to get into all that as we keep going. So again, what a moon glow boa is, it's a hypo anatheristic albino. So let's put this moon glow boa, go, put this moon glow boa back, and then I'm going to show you some different combinations to make them. So this girl, she's, uh, she's going back. What the characteristics of the moon glow boa are is that you would have a reduced pattern from the hypo, the lack of black pigment from the, uh, from the hypo as well, then you have the anatheristic, which is going to reduce the reds, and then you have the albino, which is going to take out all the reds. So you basically have an all-white snake that has somewhat of a subtle pattern to it, as we just saw. Now, the base morph of this is, or one of the base morphs, is going to be just a simple albino. So, like this girl right here, see if we can get this, this camera to focus. This is a simple albino snake. A simple one gene recessive snake right here. Uh, no, they don't live in these bins. So this girl is just the regular albino that is in is a key to making the moon glows. So let's put her back, and then let's pull out an anatheristic. So this guy, off camera, he's breeding. He wants to breed. He's with the female right now. Let's actually pull them both out. So this is a male anatheristic bow constrictor. I'm going to pull off the side of the view again so the camera stops focusing on me and starts focusing on him. So this snake here lacks the black pigments, I'm sorry, lacks the red pigments that makes up the uh, the albino. So you have an albino and then you pull out those those red pigments and then that makes a snow, which I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to show you a snow boa. And then in addition to that, you have a hypomelanistic boa, a hypo. So when you put this into it, it's going to reduce the saddle count, pull out some of the freckling and things like that you might have on another boa constrictor, just a normal, and then uh, and then it's going to that's that's a component to a sun glow. So let's jump right into what a snow is while I uh, while I keep these guys or these these two from running around. So a snow boa is the combination of the albino that we just looked at with the anatheristic recessive trait into it. So you have two recessive traits combined into one snake. So if we pull this girl out and I show her to the camera, she's, she's cranky, she's in shed, but uh, let's see if we can get this to focus in. So as you can see, this snake is kind of an all white snake. It has no red pigments into it, which is the trait of the anatheristic, but then it still has the full saddle count because it doesn't have the hypo in it. So this snake, let's see if we can get this to, to zoom in a little bit better here. So yeah, there you go. So you can see this snake has full saddles. There's no reduction in the saddles because there is no hypomelanistic trait to this snake. So putting this girl back, I'm gonna pull out a sun glow boa constrictor. So a sun glow boa constrictor that we have here. Now, this is an albino mixed with the hypo. There's no anatheristic in this. So what that does is it completely intensifies the reds, it reduces the blacks, and you have that opposite effect of what you just saw in the snow boa. So I'm going to get off the camera again, let the camera focus in on this girl. So this girl again, you can see she has those reduced saddle counts right here. So they're not as big, they're not as wide and blocky, they're, they're, uh, they're more of like a bow tie pattern that you would typically see in a hypomelanistic boa. So that is the albino with the hypo. 
So once we mix that recessive and incomplete dominant, you're going to get the albino with the hypo, and that's, that's going to give you the sun glow. No, they don't live in these bins for the second time. So all of those components mixed together will then give you the moon glow bowl, which we looked at to start, but let's pull this girl out one more time to take another look. So I'm going to get off camera again, and maybe we can see the reduction in saddles here. So there you go. So you can see these saddles are sm smaller spaced, just like the hypo was. See them here? More of a bow tie shape. But then you also have the color and pattern that we saw in the snow boa. So what actually makes up these snakes is a combination of all of those complete traits together, with the gold being a snake that's as white as you can get it, with as much reduced pattern as you can possibly have. These were like the original leucistic boas. Now I know they're not leucistic, but in terms of like what was the boa constrictor of all boa constrictors, it was the all white pure snake. So what we were trying to do with these before we had leucistic snakes was get a snake as white as possible. And this girl's running away on me, this hypo. So let me grab her again. She's gonna pull her bedding all over the place. But let's take another look at this, this girl here. So again, you can see that reduction in the saddles. Not so much super, super reduced bow ties like we saw in the other snakes, but the reduction in the saddles. This girl right here is head albino, and then the, she, I'm sorry, she's head albino and head anatheristic. The snake in there is anatheristic head albino. So together, in theory, these guys should give me ghosts, they should give me hypos, I'll get normals, I'll get anatheristics from here, I'll get sun glows, I'll get moon glows, I'll get a combination of all different cool stuff. When I personally breed, that's what I like to do. I like to get a variety of different animals so that when you guys are looking on the site, I get different price points of animals that I can, I can sell, I can provide to you guys. And not everybody wants the end game snake. Some people want the challenge to make that end game. So I have, you know, that's, that's the point of what I try to do is I try to produce a range of these things. And uh, me personally, I like to see the range. I like to look in the, in the litter when these girls lay and see all different cool stuff, all different colors and patterns, pick through and figure out which ones are the best, which ones I like the most, and then, uh, then work with you guys to see which ones you guys want as pets or as breeders. So all that said, let's take one more look at the anatheristic snake because I think he's pretty cool. This guy I've been raising for about four years. So this is a four-year-old male and a four-year-old female. Just to give you a size reference of, of where they all are. And uh, I think Anery is kind of an underrated morph. I really like these guys. I really appreciate them as a morph all on their own. But a lot of people don't really breed them and don't really keep them anymore. They're always mixed with something else, which I, I really do think it's, it's cool to see the morphs as just their base, just the solo base morph. I mentioned it in my other video, but I think people are putting too many things together and they're mudding up what a snake really is. You can't appreciate the single genes anymore because they're mixed with too many other, other pieces, too many other components. So these are the base morphs. Again, I hope this video helped you guys. I hope you appreciate this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. If you, if you haven't already, please keep subscribing. This channel is growing. I appreciate all you guys. I'm going to continue to post videos once every Wednesday and once every Saturday until you guys say stop posting or until you guys say post more. So please keep following, keep subscribing, keep liking, and let's keep it moving. Thanks, guys.